welcome back. Got a very important update here, so let's jump right in. We're gonna head back over to Colville Bay, site of the second findings, where we can now say for the first time ever, a Lake Mead secret case has been solved. Remains number two near Colville Bay have been positively identified using DNA evidence as 42-year-old Thomas Ernst. We're going to hear what happened the day Thomas went missing from his son, now 31, who was aboard the boat with him at the time. It was August 2nd, 2002, and Thomas had set out with his family in their boat from Colville Bay for a day of fun on the water. His son Tom was only 10 years old at the time. Tom tells the moment he remembers his dad decided to go swimming off the boat during the trip in a recent interview. My dad just decided, you know what, why not? So he took off his shirt, he jumps in the water. He also recalls how his dad was a prankster. And when he first started calling for help, they weren't sure if he was joking around or not. He was a big jokester, so he would always mess around with us. But next thing we know, um, he was basically screaming for help. Within moments, Thomas slipped under the waterline and everything went silent again. Sadly, he never resurfaced. Attempts were made to locate and rescue Thomas, all to no avail. Now, two decades later, Thomas has finally been found once again, thanks in large part to Tom and his sister. They both provided the DNA samples to the Clark County coroner, which were used to positively ID the remains. We hope that Thomas may now be laid to rest properly, and that his remaining family can rest a bit easier with the closure. You may recall the gentleman, Todd Collad, from our second update who also lost his father near Colville Bay at only three years old. Todd was hopeful that the DNA results of remains number two might match his father, who was ejected and drowned in a boating accident back in 1958. Though this case did not end up bringing the answers that Todd wanted, we hold out hope that his father may still be found. Now we head out of Colville Bay and back over to Hemingway Harbor where the first washed up barrel was found along the receding water line there. You'll recall there has been quite a bit of headway in this case, though we are still waiting on conclusive DNA results. Clues so far point to this being Bobby Eugene Shaw, who went missing around 1977 and may have allegedly been involved with the mob, according to his sister Barbara Brock. Barbara was previously contacted by the coroner's office and submitted a DNA sample when requested, the results of which are still pending. Enter Emily Svensson, a Swedish reporter based out of New York City. She came to Lake Mead in order to cover the odd findings and drought for Swedish publication Often Blotted. Little did she know that her and her photographer Johanna Searing would become part of the story themselves. While looking around the same area the barrel was found, Emily had come upon an oddly familiar looking outline in the dried up mud. Kicking around the mud a bit and then taking a closer look, she quickly realized it was a handgun. An older Beretta 9mm to be exact. One that authorities have now speculated may be directly involved with the barrel found nearby. We sort of stumbled across this, con the contours of a gun, and uh, it was sort of buried in, in the sand. The Beretta was found 100 meters from where the unfortunate gunshot victim was originally discovered. It had no magazine and was filled with rust and debris. The Beretta was promptly collected by Las Vegas homicide detectives and is undergoing further analysis. Coincidentally enough, police said they were in the same area with metal detectors just a few days earlier, an activity that is strictly forbidden to the public inside national parks, though they reported they did not find anything of interest. And now we'll head just up from Hemingway Harbor to the beach area, where we add another number to the list, as the fifth remains were reported the evening of Monday, August 15th, around 8 p.m. The remains were once again found in the swim beach area, location of findings three and four. Interestingly enough, they were found again by Jesus Catalan, who also found the third set of remains.
The dive team with Las Vegas Metro was called in and they worked to investigate and remove the remains the following day. The medical examiner will now begin the process of trying to identify the findings and discover a possible cause of death. It is still inconclusive whether the multiple swim beach remains found are from the same source. A special hats off to folks like Jesus and other local YouTubers and journalists like Emily who are all out there in the heat putting boots on the ground helping to discover and solve these mysteries. Thank you again for tuning in and we'll see you for the next update. We'll see what, what other secrets Lake Mead holds. <laughs>